Hello everyone, my name is Dakota and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're going to be going through the process of designing a simple nuclear power plant and how you might be able to use this method to design any sort of factory that you might want to build, no matter how simple or complex. I get a lot of questions about how I come up with my designs and that's what we're here to answer today. Everything we're going to talk about is timestamped in the description below. And so without any further hesitation, let's get into it. All right, now before we get into the build, I do want to make a note about this design. This is a very simple build, and there are much higher yield builds available out there if you're willing to take on the greater complexity. But if this is your first time getting into nuclear power, I can't think of an easier way to do it. And this is still pretty high yield. If you were to take all of the uranium on the map and convert it into this design, you would get a bit over 250 gigawatts of power. That is huge and more than enough to power any factory that you might want to build. That said, it's a little under half of what you can get using uranium power alone if you use alternate recipes. If you're looking for something a little bit better, we'll be covering that in a future video. This design I did not expect to actually be viable in a world, but given how simple it is and how tileable it is, I'm really impressed with it. And I think we're going to go ahead and use this in our current Let's Play series, and I'd love to hear what you think about using it in your world. I will say, if you want to use this design, it would be good to build several of these platforms. 10 has a nice ratio with the input, so that may be a good starting place. Today we're going to be designing a brand new factory from scratch. We're going to go through a build I've never done before. I want to show you guys my creative process, how I take a look at the problem, how I approach each step of it, and how we, uh, what, what other considerations we use when we're taking that design and then finalizing it for use in an actual world or in a Let's Play series or something like that. Now, when I build these things, I start out in creative mode using mods. I'm running two mods right now that are, are relevant. So the first one is going to be the pack utility mod. This lets you fly, it gives you creative mode. It lets you set up power so you don't need power uh, for your buildings, things like that. It is the creative mode mod and it is great. The relevant commands there are uh, exclamation point creative to set, turn on free building, create a power to make it so your buildings don't require power, and then fly. So exclamation point fly in order to fly around. The other mod I'm using is the uh, smart or magic machines, magic machines. And this is just so that I don't have to set up logistics lines to supply this factory. We're going to not deal with this until the very end. After we've built the factory, after we've decided what our inputs are going to be, this is how we're going to provide those inputs so we don't have to set up mining and a train line and all that to, to supply them in order to test this. So with that said, what we're going to be building today is a nuclear power plant. Now, I have made nuclear power plants before, but the one we're building today is one that I've never built before. We're going to start from scratch. And this is something I do whenever I tackle a new challenge, whenever I want to work in a new area or whenever I want to uh, take on a build or a design using recipes I've never used before or anything like that. And what this does is it gives me a sense of what challenges I'm going to face, how the buildings are going to fit into the space I've chosen. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a basic foundation. And I'm going to do this just a little bit away from the coast so that we can have a, uh, let's see, a, nine, a 10 by 10 foundation square to start. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this plant won't fit on a 10 by 10 foundation, but that's always a good starting point. It's easy to create with the zooping tool, and it's a good universal sort of block size. 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now I'm using the, uh, I like either the default frame foundations or the metal, metal foundations just because they give you the border lines and that lets you count out tiles. It also makes it really easy to see where the center of a tile is. So if I wanna run a conveyor line into a conveyor wall output, uh, that's really easy to do on the tiles that have those. In a real build, I may replace this with concrete or asphalt or whatever else, but the grit metal tiles and then the default tiles are really good for that sort of tile. All right, now the first thing I wanna do on this is think about how I want to do this. So if I were to do this in a real world, we would want a logistics line coming in and then supplying the factory on one edge. Now, the problem here is that if I need to build out, I need to build out in the opposite direction and the way we build is actually backwards or the way we design is actually backwards from the, the way production flows so what that means is that we're going to need our nuclear power plant over on this side of our platform and let's see let's try and do something like let's see where so we've got three inputs here so let's go ahead and leave two tiles just like that and one tile in now what this means is that our input lines which would normally be here are actually going to be at the other side and we don't know how far out this build is going to take us so we can't build it now once we've come up with the finalized design once we've finished everything today we can go ahead and take this design and sort of rotate it 180 degrees so that the nuclear power plant is clean but when we're designing the build we don't want to do that now what we're going to be doing here today is not a build that i would necessarily recommend they use or maybe it is maybe it'll be great um, i've never done a build like this before but we're going to try and build a single nuclear power plant that runs at full capacity all the time 100 percent efficient this is going to make use of a ton of space and a ton of machines uh, a lot more than a, a normal nuclear build would generally use but it'll use a lot less power so it may actually end up being more efficient in that regard all right now from our nuclear power plant we can see we need fuel and we need water and a nuclear power plant i happen to know requires 300 units of water so let's go ahead and plop down three water extractors over here this resource is not deep enough okay well we'll, we'll set up those three water extractors and in our mind, we know that they belong on the end. You know what? Let's just let's just move this over a little bit further to get those water extractors in. Because I do want this to, to look nice and be functional. So let's do 
water extractor, water extractor, water extractor. And let's replace our nuclear power plant. All right, so then put our input there, and two units in. Bring the space down easily, it'll trick you sometimes. Oh, it doesn't fit perfectly on the guideline, that's annoying. Okay, well, close enough. All right, so we've got our nuclear power plant, and that's gonna take 300 units of water. So these are all producing 100 right now. So we'll under that, under tune that to 83.33% on all three of these. So that we aren't overproducing water. And actually, we'll go ahead and set one of these to 101. And the reason for that is that every building, when you load a save, deletes five units of, of fluid. So this nuclear plant, when we load a save, will delete five units of water. So we need to produce five extra units of water between each save. And that might be five minutes, it might be 10 minutes, it might be an hour. But by producing one extra unit of water per minute, we should be able to make that up in a reasonable amount of time. And I think that's that's fair and, and reasonable. The next things we're going to need to do are to have a uh, input line and an output line for this. And so, so let's go ahead and place those lines down pipeline over here for the water plants. We'll set that up in a little bit. But uh, the output line is going to be nuclear waste. So this is something we're going to want to ship away somewhere that it's not going to interfere with anything or come back to haunt us. So let's go ahead and pull this over here, here, and bring this up this way. And we'll just set that there as a potential output. You know, what we might do is have something just so we know that this is the nuclear waste output that we don't want. Uh, and then up here, we can place a extra storage container. So and boom. So now we've got our nuclear waste sort of carted away. Again, in a real build, uh, we would we would not have that going into a storage container, at least not so close by. We might have a truck that takes this, you know, a few kilometers over in the distance and then has a large array of storage containers that it fills up gradually over time. In a future series, I plan on doing a nuclear processing plant where we actually take that and turn it into plutonium and sink it, but that is beyond the scope of today. Now for our input line here, we are going to try and align this to the center of this grid. We're going to click that over until it is nice and, nice and neat 90 degree turn and bring that over here like so. All right, now we did delete three. I think that we're definitely gonna need a lot more, uh, a lot more foundation. We'll go ahead and start with three. Now the uranium fuel rods are produced. Let's go ahead and, uh, sorry, they're produced in a blender. blender? Manufacturer, no, they're produced in a manufacturer. So let's go ahead and set up a manufacturer right there to produce those uranium fuel rods. Now the uranium fuel rod here is going to make use of encased uranium cells, in case industrial beams and electromagnetic control rods, and it's gonna produce 0 0.4 per minute. And this is important because we're only powering one, one machine. We actually want this at 50% because one, this will sort of match the output of this machine to the input of the nuclear power plant. And you know what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and raise this up just a little bit here. Uh, I think a manufacturer will fit off two by two. May, might need to be a three by three. Let's see. And that's just in case we need to send an input pipe underneath here. We'll be able to do that much more easily, but we can wait. You know, I, I don't think this... Let's start with this on a lower level. So, and let's just go ahead and connect that manufacturer up. I'm gonna double check the tuning on that. Rod at 50%. All right, so now we need to break down a solution for each of these. We need an electromagnetic control rod and the encased uranium cell. Those are gonna be the more interesting parts of this build. Uh, and then the encased industrial beam is quite simple. That's a fairly early game recipe. And we have our four inputs over here. And so what I'm thinking we might do is have a, an assembler set over here, like like so, maybe centered on this last, uh, maybe in my order. There we go. There we go. And then what we can do is we can take a belt and bring that on over here. And this assembler is going to be for our encased industrial pipes. Now, our encased industrial pipes here, uh, we're going to be doing this at 50%. Instead of needing 1.2, we're going to need 0.6. Now here's where we might want to look at our alternate recipes because the encased industrial pipe is, or the encased industrial beam has the pipe alternate. And I think we're gonna want pipes elsewhere for stators. So we're gonna go with that because that'll keep our uh, subsequent previous step a little bit simpler. All right, so now we've got our encased industrial pipes. Let's go ahead and set up our uh, electromagnetic control rods. Now the electromagnetic control rods, I think, let's go ahead and build this up. A few more foundations out, like so. Now the electromagnetic control rods, I think we are gonna to want to do on a raised platform. Uh, and I think it's gonna be sort of a similar thing. I think it might just be right in here and then has a, a connection that comes around and snakes into one of those. So let's go ahead and get some walls. So that's clipping just a little bit into that machine. Let's go ahead and delete that. We don't need to go in. Boom, boom. There, there. We'll set that. Now let's set one of these to be aligned to the center of a tunnel. 
there. And then the other one will just be offset a little bit. That's okay. All right, and then we're going to need our output here. So, oh. All right, so this is our electromagnetic control rods. And we're going to go with the default recipe for that, uh, AI limiters and stators, because AI limiters are easier to produce than our high-speed connectors. So that's that's just going to be simple. Now, again, for the ratio there, we're going to need two per minute. So we're going to need one per minute. So let's pop up here and set this to one per minute. So that's 25% clock speed. I actually, actually had an AI limiter. There. Okay. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Uh, and then let's see. The, the last thing we're going to need for our final control thing here is some um, is a blender. I believe a blender is perfectly two by two. So I think if we do just like that. And this blender, I happen to know we do want elevated for a very important reason. It's a little wider than it's a three by two. Actually, you know, I kind of like that that wall there. That, that provides a nice visual visual contrast. Because one of the things we're doing here, let's go ahead and set this there and set up this input. So go over there. And done. All right. Now this thing is all squared away. And for our encased uranium cells, we're going to need 10 per minute. Let's pop on over here and make your encased uranium cells at 10 per minute. Now, one of the things that's interesting about the encased uranium cells is that it both produces sulfuric acid and requires sulfuric acid. So what we're going to want to do here is set up a loop back on this. And so that's why we have this wall there separating this uh, this out a little bit. So we can set a pipe there, snake that pipe underneath like so, and then reconnect it up. And so that's our sulfuric input line. Now, in order to make that work, we're also going to have to have a little bit more sulfuric acid coming in. So we'll go ahead and set up another input line there. So this is our sulfuric acid input line, and it will provide the sulfuric acid for this. Thing. Our other ingredients are uranium and concrete, and I think we're actually going to accept that both of those are uh, just sort of provided, that those are not things we need to uh, really worry about making. So we're going to uh, just go ahead and have those come in because uranium is a raw ore, you know, we, that comes straight from the miner. And concrete is uh, a very simple production step. I think it's reasonable for us to say we're going to uh, leave the first production step for each of our resources as it's appropriate to other factories that are importing our ingots rather than our ores, you know, or we're imp importing concrete rather than limestone, for example. And I think that's a reasonable thing to do, especially this late in the game because we're going to have a lot of other places to use. And we're also not necessarily going to want to have to be building near those resources. So since we have to mine them and process them anyways, that's okay. All right, now that we've got that taken care of, let's go ahead and take a look at our electromagnetic control rods. So our electromagnetic control rods, we're going to need stators and elevators. All right, we're going to we're definitely need some more space. So let's go ahead and build out another uh, 10 by 10. Let's build this out to 20 by 20. Let's see where are we at. So, just, so that's 10. We're at five more. So let's see five more here. Still don't think that'll be quite enough, but hopefully that'll get us quite a bit closer. Might be enough if we really, really compact it, but I'm not necessarily trying to go for the, the most compact design here as much as easy to follow, easy to flow. Um, actually, since this is an outer line, this will be our uranium line, and then this one will be our concrete line, since that's a little closer in case we need the concrete elsewhere, like for our encased industrial pipes. All right, so the next thing we're going to need is a refinery. Let's build a refinery here. And this is gonna be making our sulfuric acid. And the only output of that refinery is our pipe. So can we even, can we even just do that there? Will that mess with this line? No, that doesn't even, that doesn't even clip. That's nice. Okay, well that's convenient. All right, so we've got our sulfuric acid there. And so this refinery is going to be making sulfuric acid. Now our blender is going to require 40%, uh, so 16 sulfuric acid per minute. So let's go ahead and set this to 16 per minute. Now the refinery is a little trickier because it's going to require uh, a sulfur input as well as a water input. Now a water extractor requires a three by three hole in the floor there, but we can do that easily enough. And then, let's see, we want to do this. Now, now here's where we've run into an interesting design problem. And this is where I, I think we're gonna change up our design a little bit. Um, because of the shape of this and the where the inputs on the refinery are, we take a look at the refinery here. The water extractor is actually on the left hand side. So so having that come in from the right, we could do a bridge over the pipeline, but that's kind of clunky, that's kind of ugly. So uh, I think what we're going to do is instead, we may actually, we may be able to keep the refinery in the same place. Maybe able to keep the refinery in the same place. Just reconnect that up and then have the water extractor 
over here. Now water extractors are actually 2.5 by 2.5, so we need a three by three space for it, but it can sort of be a little more flexible in that space. And so we can do maybe something like that. Let's try to get it. And if we want this to be pixel perfect, then we can use the uh, lookout towers on the left and the right. And then we can take a water extractor and that will actually snap to us. So there, perfect. So perfect, and then we can delete those lookout towers. All right, and then we can take this and connect it up there. So that's, I don't love the angle on that pipe, but it could be worse. Uh, and let's go ahead and run our concrete pipeline across that gap there, uh, and then our uranium pipeline as well. So there. All right, so now this requires our sulfur input, which we'll just assume is going to come in along the center of this. All right, so now we have a water extractor and some sulfur set up. Gosh, that, that's gonna bug me. We're gonna have to. So we're gonna do a little bit of an advanced thing here just to make this pretty. Um, and that's use a half foundation so that we can get a nice alignment on this pipeline. Um, and how you do a half foundation is with a walkway. You just take a catwalk and you place it there and then you can place a foundation halfway in and come back. Just like that, catwalk, and then back. Let's get our air towers again. And one more extra. Now, if we want, we can even delete that and just have, have that centered in that three by three space. All right, now we need the line that comes out here. Done. All right, perfect. All right, so that's our uranium, encased uranium cells all complete. We've got our sulfur, we've got our concrete and our uranium. That half is done. Now let's focus on this half. Our two assemblers over here, one of these is going to be taking in uh, AI limiters and the other one's gonna be taking in staters. Now, the staters are interesting because they require uh, pipes and wire threads to need another assembler. Let's go ahead and come back here and do another assembler. All right, I lost a little bit of footage there. I apologize for that. But basically, I've um, been playing around with these assemblers and trying to get them to fit in the remaining space we have. I like the idea of this being 10 wide. I want to try and keep that. I don't want to build out any more unless we absolutely have to. So we're going to change the pipe a little bit, and we're going to take our uh, encased industrial pipe assembler, and we're actually going to come at that from a different angle. Instead of pointing sort of to the uh, towards the end of the power plant, we're going to be pointing directly into this, uh, this system over here. And this line then doesn't need to go nearly so far because it can connect up right there. And then this guy can come up there. And that still lets us have our two uh, sort of inputs for this one nicely on this foundation platform there. Uh, but it opens up this whole space for a lot more flexibility in terms of where things can go. And so here, we can do, I think we're gonna, uh, I think we're probably gonna wanna do the rest of our assemblers on a raised platform, but it means we can have uh, our assembler for our electromagnetic control rods here, like so maybe. And then if we put a, a lift there, there, oh, that looks nice. Okay, perfect, perfect. It's a little windier than I, I generally like it to be, but I'm not complaining. I'm also gonna change these things to be centered on the two sides there. That's... There, there, there's that. All right, so those can now come down that way. And perfect. All right, now, for our uranium control, Again, this needs to be at one per minute, so 25% clock speed. So we're going to need uh, one AI limiter per minute and 1.5 staters per minute. So let's go ahead and set up our uh, staters real quick. And so let's go ahead and just do our inputs for this. And these can actually both be both coming back this way. So, and now we need to come up with a way to uh, provide for our staters. And so we need to provide our staters. And so we need an assembler. And I think we can reasonably do that like right there. Uh, because that will let us sort of find around back. We could also do it maybe like this. 
if we if we line it up with that one, it blocks the other one. So it needs to be over here somewhere, and I, I like only having the one one bit. So we'll do it in this direction, but I do want this one raised up as well. As a rule, assemblers and manufacturers should probably be raised up until you know you won't need them to be. Um, you know, this assembler up here and this manufacturer, I kind of had a sense that I'd be able to bring the lines in in parallel, so it was fine. Uh, but these other ones, I'm just going to sort of default to being raised up uh, because that way we can do the underfed belt system and it all works out nicely. And I, actually, you know, this is interesting. If this is raised up and is feeding into that thing, then we can do a just a little thing like that. Boom. And go ahead and delete some of these foundations because we're not sure we need those. I don't like having hovering, just like huge long hovering conveyor belts, but this is reasonably well supported at both sides. That looks okay. I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that. Uh, and actually, this other one. So that's our thing. Our leaders are all food with our assembler. So if we do that one raised as well, and let's set that up back here. So that right there and there, and there, and then fill this in. And I wonder if we can just get the output of this to line up nicely there. And go there. Nice. That, that's beautiful. I love that. All right. Perfect. And that means that if we need to, we can actually run conveyor lines underneath here as well, and it will work out just fine. All right. So let's take a look at what we need next. So this is going, did we say this was going to be our stators? So let's go ahead and find our stators in here. Boom. Uh, so we need steel pipes and wire. Now steel pipes, we're also, we're going to be sending steel pipes over here for our encased industrial pipes. And so what we might do here, yeah, this is nice. This is working out. All right, so we can bring this pipeline back here. This is going to be our steel pipe. Uh, and then this one will be our concrete. But we can put a splitter on this one. Some logistics. A splitter here. And uh, we can line that splitter right about there. And we may want to adjust that slightly, but we can do this little thing. And because this area is all elevated, we can run this line in along here, just like so. so now we've got our steel pipes. So it's set up where we need to have the line in place. Now the wire is going to be trickier because we don't have anything else that requires wire. So we're definitely going to want a constructor for the wire. Now, uh, we might be able to fit that in behind there. That's a that's pretty tight, though. Uh, it's pretty tight wherever we do it. I kind of like it over here, though, because we're going to need a, a copper sheet constructor for our AI limiter. So because this one's going to require wires and this one's going to require copper sheets, we're going to be bringing in copper. And so we're going to need uh, sort of two constructors. And if we can feed those sort of side by side, then that lets us have our copper coming in from a single point. So we'll go ahead and place our constructor there. This will be our wire constructor. So let's go ahead and set that to wire. And then here, and we'll, we'll come back here and retune all these ratios to make sure that they're, they're right. I'm just on a roll with this design. I really like it. So let's keep going. All right. And one of those. We'll come around here. So, and boom, done. I love it. All right, we've got our stators all squared away. All right, now we need our, uh, our AI limiters. So that's going to be quick wire and copper sheeting. And those both come out of structures. Actually, if we do those side by side, we want them staggered a little bit. I kind of like the look of them being a little staggered because they're different material. If they were the same material, if they were making the same thing, then having them staggered sort of creates that visual offset. I like that. I think we're going to do that. If they were the same thing, they would definitely be perfectly side by side. But and then this one can come here. So and that can just go straight in there. So perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, now bring in our copper line. I do want these things to all come in like on the center of a foundation. So what we might do is have this come down here a little ways and then jump over just a little. And the reason for that is if we want to put a wall here that uh, that has a conveyor wall in it, that needs to be put with the center. And just like we did with our steel pipes, we can take our copper ingots that are coming in, and we can and pipe that, like that there, and done. All right, and so now we've got our caterium coming in. We've got our sulfur here going in. Acid. These are all centered on the line. Uh, we've got our concrete. We still need to sort out our concrete. Uh, and our steel. So we need steel and concrete. So uh, we might be able to, uh, now we need a little bit more. We need a little bit more space. I was going to say, we might be able to fit a steel constructor in here. We'll bring in steel ingots. We only really need one more constructor. But I don't think we can fit in a steel constructor and a concrete because we have two concrete lines, right? So we need to have a bridge there. I don't think we can fit those both in on a single, single foundation. Uh, but what we can do is extend all of these back because I think those are stable for now. Just like so. And then, so we're going to one more constructor, and we'll just do that right there. It could be anywhere in this, any, any old place. And that's going to make our steel pipes. Steel pipes, steel pipes, steel pipes. 
Now for the steel pipes here, we are going to do this elevated so that it can go over the top of these things. And then we'll align that. Let's bring this one down here. Like so. So that perfectly in alignment there. And then over two. Get that straight. Yeah, that's nice. So like that. And then steel pipes. So now this is a steel ingot line here. Like so. And then this is a concrete line. Now again, I think this needs to be set to come in on the center. This is where we're going to have our concrete line coming in. And then we'll create a branch off of it, just like we did with the steel pipes. Just like we did with any of our other splitting sources. And so now we can bring this guy down here. Pull that. Pull that. Flip that thing. It's not, but here's what we can do. Come down here, get a nice level view of it. Perfectly straight. Here's to be. All right. All right. So this is our concrete line here. So we can put a splitter on there, and this is in perfect alignment with the center. And then we can put it there. And there we go. All right. And I think I think that's it. I think this is a nuclear power plant. All right. Let's get uh, let's get things squared away and get this tested. So um, so again, if we were going to take this design and build this in the wild. We would take this whole thing and we would rotate it 180 degrees so that the uh, material inputs were along the shoreline where we might have like a train line or a truck line coming in and bringing those in and then have it have it all sorted out as needed and so that the water extractors and nuclear power plant were on the outside uh but because of how we had to build this out we didn't want to be you know pushing up into the jungle to build it so we built it we designed it in reverse to build it in the real world we built it on the orientation uh, now, in order to provide this thing, we're going to put down another layer of foundations. Let's get the final dimension. I think it's 22 is what I said. So there's 10 and 10. Well, yeah, 22. 22 foundations for the build platform itself. So 22 by 10. That's, that's decent. Now for our wall. We'll just go ahead and get some conveyor walls. Boom. Boom. And again, if you're not using conveyor walls, you, you don't have to do that. Like, you don't have to... Have those all perfectly aligned on the center of foundations. You don't need to have like that job there uh, if you don't like that. But what I envision is this sort of all being enclosed. It's kind of a shame to enclose it. Like, look at it, it's beautiful, right? But all being enclosed in a structure next to the, the nuclear generator tower that sits outside the building, uh, maybe with the refinery smoke stack poking through the roof a little bit. Uh, but that's how that would look. And then for providing for this right now, we're just going to use our magic machines in order to provide this so we can test it. So we're going to have a magic machine there. There you go. Now, none of this is powered up right now, so that's that's uh, that's why nothing is turning on. But I want to go through and check all the ratios before we turn things on. So let's make sure that we've... Oh, and we also need to do our pipeline here. So let's do this. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's actually a four-high thing, uh, pipeline, which you can get with a double pipeline. Here. So we got one there and there, and that will give us a perfectly level pipeline. It's an eight-meter pipeline. And because it's eight meters, it means we don't need to worry about having a pump on our water extractors either. So, on. so, so that is how we design a, a factory like this. So that's how I design a factory like this. You start with the final product and work your way backwards. Now, this is obviously not a normal power setup. Normally, I think you would do at least 10 times as much production as this, uh, maybe five times before your first one and, and go from there. But this is small, this is stable. It's relatively simple. This is, I was surprised by how simple this ended up being. I mean, there's there's a little bit of complexity with some of these belts, but, but by and large, this was probably the easiest liquid power plant I've ever built by a huge margin. I'm a big fan of this. I might end up using this design. It is less space efficient. And so, so just a quick note on efficiency. This is less space efficient. It takes more space and it takes more building materials because you need to build out the foundations. You need to have more machines. Uh, you know, some of these machines, you could in theory have like one, one assembler making AI limiters to provide for five of these, right? Like you could do that, but that costs you more power. We're saving a huge amount of power by doing it this way. And this makes it all nice and modular. And so this is, this is, I like this. This is a, a good design. I'm a fan of this. You can see that we are drawing uh, between 227 and 242 megawatts. I'm guessing that's because the water extractor is over near the power plant that's flipping on and off. Um, but we're producing 2,500 megawatts. So we're we're looking at about a 90% efficient build here, which is a fair bit better than most nuclear power plants, which I think are only about 75% efficient. So this is great. And that's going to do it for today. Hopefully you guys have found this design guide helpful. I hope this video has inspired you to try out your own designs. Leave a comment down below with your design tips, and I'll pin the best to share with the community. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you have, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Ben Dacoba, and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.